Mathis is well known here in the South Coast as being the longtime president of the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce. He has since moved on to serve as executive director of the South Coast Mentoring Initiative, or SMILES. And more importantly, he credits BCC with much of his success. My name is Jim Mathis. Uh, I graduated from Bristol Community College in June of 1983. In 1979, when I got out of the Navy and I settled here and I made this decision to go back to school, uh, I think I actually enrolled expecting that I wouldn't do well. And there are probably a lot of people who are like me, who didn't do well in high school, but they did get through. They got their, either they got their high school diploma or they got a GED, but they're not sure if they can really you know, go to college and, and do well in college, just based on personal experience. When I talk to people about Bristol Community College, I, I tell them that it is, it, you know, I think the slogan is something along the lines of, it's a place where people can change their lives for the better. And uh, that absolutely is the experience that I had. It was a defining moment in my life. It uh, took someone who always had the ability to learn, but just for various reasons, immaturity, maybe too lazy at the time, didn't learn when I was supposed to when I was in high school, but uh, that when I, you know, was grown up and got my feet under myself and uh, more serious about life, th that I in fact could, and I did. I continued and I uh, kept taking classes uh, evenings uh, until I got my degree in business administration. I got out of the Navy uh, in the in the fall of 1979. I actually was still in the Navy when I enrolled in that first class, but knew I was about to get out, um, and was very lucky. In, in December, uh, was hired by an organization, uh, Junior Achievement of Greater New Bedford. It was a big break for me, uh, a real opportunity. What struck me very quickly is I uh, continued at BCC and took all, and took other classes in business and finance was how relevant what I was learning was to the work I was doing. I would bring things from school to home to study and prepare for a test and then to work so that I could use those very same textbooks for things that I was doing in my office, setting up financial systems for a small nonprofit, how I might handle business management issues, um, uh, personnel issues, legal issues. While I got my start at Junior Achievement, I really think I matured professionally at the Chamber. Um, it, it was, as much as I enjoyed it, I, I spent the first two years pretty much scared to death. I mean, it was an awesome responsibility for somebody I felt my age with my background. Um, and so while, I mean, I, I think I knew I was capable of it, by the same token, it was so new to me. And there was a lot of responsibility, not, you know, just the organization, but other people who worked with me that I felt you know, a lot of responsibility to as well. As the chamber evolved uh, during my years there, um, the issues that mattered most to New Bedford, and not just businesses, but to New Bedford, were issues we were willing to work on and that we did work on, whether those might be doing what we could to help economic development agencies attract new industry to the area, or if we have a problem with not enough kids finishing school, what kinds of things can be done to help more kids f do better in school and, and graduate from high school at least and go on uh, in public safety issues. Um, it, w it always felt good to me if I'd go home at the end of the day and know that while we, you know, you never, when you're trying to do something to improve a community, you don't fix it. I mean, um, people's perception is that you do, but you don't fix it in a day. You try to make the circumstance better. You try to move the needle one way or the other. Uh, and, and most days when I went home, I felt we were doing that. First and foremost was coming to the realization that education is not just an issue for a school superintendent and a school department. Educating uh, the youth in a community is the job of the community. The schools, yes, is that the primary place? Absolutely. But everybody has to have a stake in it. And so I wanted to find ways that the chamber could appropriately become involved. And after doing quite a bit of research on it, what seemed appropriate was a mentoring program. 
And we started SMILES, now it's been about four and a half years ago, as a pilot program at Normandon Middle School in Keith. Uh, after three years of the pilot, we're taking a look at, you know, the impact it had on the kids being mentored with respect to their attendance, their conduct, and their educational performance in school, their grades, it works, which shouldn't be a surprise because the research said it would. Around that time, I uh, had someone in a conversation where we were talking about who we going to get to lead this, someone who uh, looked at me and said, well, what about you? Um, and I think I knew as soon as that question was phrased to me that, um, that I was going to do it, but I still need, there were still family and friends that I needed to talk to, people at the chamber. I know there are other people who feel as strongly about this as I do, but no one feels stronger about it than I do. And as I began to think of, of who I was at that stage, which is uh, a little over a year ago in, in uh, early 2006, I was somebody who had experience in running a nonprofit, someone who had a, a real passion for this issue and, and understood why it's important and really wants it to succeed and who has a lot of contacts. And so while there may be other people who could do this and do this well, I just had a lot of things available to me that other people didn't. Um, and then the last piece that came together was when I realized that, that if I didn't try, um, I'd regret it. Where at the chamber I might be working on many different things, many different issues that are diverse. Some days in New Bedford, some days in surrounding towns, some days maybe in Boston. It's not the same here. You know, the work that I'm doing here is intended to impact the behavior and the educational performance of kids who, who, uh, who can use somebody in their life to help them, along with the others who are already there helping them, to enhance their success, their educational success. And to do that with one kid and then another kid until we get to 3,000. And then sustain that from now on it's never something we're going to be able to walk away from so that I can look back at, at some age, I don't know how old I'll be, and feel like, okay, this worked and we'll be able to measure that it worked by the fact that it changed a circumstance. And I know that there are going to be a lot of today's children who will be adults 10 years from now um, who, will be who will go to BCC and who will have the opportunity to have the exact same kind of thing happen to them that, did, that happened to me at BCC. BCC changes lives. It takes someone, you may be doing okay. I mean, it wasn't like I wasn't doing okay, I was. But put you in a circumstance where you can, in fact, make a really good life for yourself and find work that you really enjoy instead of work that you just need to do. And there's a big difference there. Uh, in terms of, of one's quality of life. The goal of SMILES is to mentor 3,000 students in New Bedford and Fall River. Mathis and his organization is well on its way to achieving that benchmark.